at Briarcliff in Ohio. Things got rolling in wild fashion. And Brandon Hogue took off with an early lead over Joel Hetrick. And Hogue's speed allowed him to hold the defending champion off for a while until finally Hetrick made the move, which could help him ice a title. Then Chad Whedon moved forward, but it was too little too late. Hetrick standing on the precipice of defending his title. Hogue was off to the races out front again in Moto2. But the pressure is being applied, and he made a mistake, putting Hetrick into the lead over Jeffrey Rastrelli and Wienan. Then Wienan went after Rastrelli for second, and when the controversial move got the spot, but he'd later be penalized for crossing over the track markers. Meanwhile, the 1-1 for Hetrick wraps up the championship. Today, it's a day of play at Loretta Lynn. It's ATV Dirt Days, the traditional finale of the ATV National Motocross Championship. We've been racing here in this series since the 1980s at the beautiful home of the late Loretta Lynn and her family outside of Nashville, Tennessee. And if you come and race here in the summer, as these folks do, you'll know you're always dodging the weather. We had a lot of rain leading up to the race. The track has come around early for practice and the fans are ready for it. You see the conditions are pretty good, but there is more rain expected as the weekend goes on. This race being held with heavy hearts. First, the 88 Live to Ride auction, 20 years now of Matt Bartosik's family. We lost Matt in 2003 in a racing crash, always raising money. 88 Live to Ride Foundation and endowment to try to improve safety in the sport. But terrible news on the way to this event, the Molander family passing in an RV accident on the way to the track. That's Dane, the racer, last year's Pro-Am champ, a pro rookie. His sister, Miranda, our 32nd card girl, and parents, Don and Kim, all perished. That is obviously the worst type of news you could ever hear. And I know emotions are raw, and it probably doesn't even make sense to a lot of people in this paddock right now. We are going to go racing. Let's check in with Podium at our last race. What's going on, guys? We are here at Loretta Lynn's, the last round of the ATV Motocross. It's crazy. The season went by super quick this year. Um, coming off of third place at the last round, uh, I went 5-3 on the day there at Briarcliff. I definitely had a little bit of luck. Uh, the second moto, actually 5-2. So there was uh, two or three riders ahead of me that had a small incident, and they got docked the position, and it bumped me up. So definitely not the way I want to get uh, my first podium of 2023 trying to finish strong we got some weather on our hands today here and that's it this is a wrap of the season which is crazy to say so other than that i'll see you next year well it's a wrap for him and his pro season we'll talk more about his other exploits a little later in the show let's check in with chad weenan second at our last race last event i was able to build some more and uh maybe we'll be able to get back close to the top step and battle for those wins uh that's my ultimate goal this weekend and uh good starts of course yeah looking forward to it yeah, not much left to race for now that Hetrick has already wrapped up the title early. We'll see how that affects how he performs. We get to qualifying, and now you can see dark skies overhead. And I'll just tell you right now, we ended up with only one qualifying session because soon the rain would dump. Hetrick did end up with a fast time. There's Bryce Ford absolutely flying and literally there to try to get over the landing of that quad on his quad. Here is Weenan in the Ten Commandments. Legendary section here at Loretta's. There's Janusa. And Hogue, who could have, should have, would have podium at the last race, but you saw in our intro, had the crash while leading Moto 2. There's Max Linquist showing you how you get over that quad on a quad. Jeffrey Rastrelli. A lot of podium players today. I love the way this season has uh, transpired. How many riders that can run up front? There's Wesley Wolf at 741. Aaron Salinas on the number seven. It's Kevin Saar had the podium earlier in the year on the 311, maybe Europe's fastest ATV rider. Cesar Jimenez, this might be the end for him as a pro racer full time. Hetrick again on top in qualifying. And we'll be right back with more. ATV Motocross is brought to you by RP Race Performance. By Rocky Mountain, ATVMC.com and by CST Tire.
Welcome back. It is ATV Motocross from Loretta Lynn's Ranch. There are the dark skies that we mentioned in qualifying that will end our final qualifying session, and then it came down hard. And this is tradition here at Loretta's to have this type of weather at some point throughout the weekend. They did their best to reclaim the track. Got in, I believe, one amateur moto before it was time to send the pros out. So we'll see how it goes in the mud with the big tires on and the mud setups. Let's check in with the champion, Joel Hetrick. I uh, got first in qualifying. Felt pretty good, hit some cool jumps. Track was pretty deep. We got a lot of rain, uh, obviously, the week prior at the dirt bike event, and uh, actually just rained now. So track's going to be a little difficult today. Putting the mud set up on behind me and just getting prepared as, as well as we can to go out there and uh, obviously try to have fun, but you know, try to keep going and not get stuck. So that's the goal. Have fun, try to get a podium. Obviously, going for wins and uh, don't get stuck. Well, I'll tell you, there's a lot more relaxed mood now that Hedrick has already wrapped up the title early. You do not want to go into a mud race, even if you have a big points lead. The title's not wrapped up in these conditions. Anything can happen. You see the duct tape there over the front of every machine to protect the radiators. Let's go racing in the mud. And Hedrick does his job. He gets out front early. That's going to prevent a lot of the mud. No, wait. Weenin down to the inside. Hedrick able to hold him off. And you can see these machines laboring Oh, this is going to be so treacherous. And we did, as Hedrick mentioned, have three days of heavy rain last week for the bike race, then rain in between, and then the more rain today. I can't believe this track is as good as it is. And there is a lot of drainage here at Loretta's. You wouldn't know it, but the track is actually built up a little bit higher than the ground, and then there is drainage underneath that will help. We're going to wave these riders out of Storyland in the back. They'll just make a left, and that's probably a, a quarter of the track they didn't have to prep. And that's pretty deep dirt back there in ruts that they won't have to worry about. So Hedrick out front making the number one look good on the Phoenix Racing Yamaha. I actually love the way the quads look when they turn them into mud boats. They put the big tires on there, look a little more stock. Got the full fenders. Not the ton of duct tape over the front of Hedrick's machine. Won't need it down to these out front. Kind of interesting that he didn't go with the set up there to protect the radiators. They probably have a different idea to accomplish essentially the same thing. Maybe something that's not so obvious to the naked eye. Either way, Hetrick out front, Weenan in second. And you've got to go into conservation mode with the equipment. It is so easy to smoke the clutch in these conditions. And ATVs put a lot more load on the transmission and clutch than a dirt bike. They're a little heavier, but really they'd say it's the contact patch, that wide contact patch with the two wide rear tires. You've got to stay off the clutch in these conditions for two reasons. A, you can smoke the clutch plates, but B, every time you slip that clutch, it creates a lot of heat. A lot more heat actually is developed by smoking the clutch or using the clutch than anything else. It's not revs, it's not RPM, even the mud and the radiators. Using the clutch is what creates the most heat. They figure that out with these four strokes through the years. So it's not about speed right now. It's about rolling on the power and trying to ride these things gently. But you hear Rastrelli when you get buried in there, it is so tough to do that. And then Hedrick spinning sideways. Again, the clutch is a great way to prevent wheel spin. You just feather that thing a little bit. You can actually control the wheel spin better with the clutch than you can with the throttle. But you want to be conservative with it in these conditions. Look at Bryce Ford. He is second in points, trying to hold off Wienan. Not the start he wanted today. He is in ninth right now. Hetrick pulling away. Normally, we'd make a right and go past the famous billboards at Loretta's. They cut them out of the bike race due to the mud, and they're doing the same here. Look at the lead Hetrick has built up over Wienan, who go with the all-white, but the fly racing gear and the machine. I don't know if they're ever going to get that clean. Head over to Chad's Pitch, fans, at the end of this race, and there might be some muddy giveaways. Look at the goggle strap up top of the helmet there for Hetrick, probably using the double goggles trick. It's come around the last couple of years. You prep a set of goggles for the race, then you put one set of goggles over it, and then if you get a bad start, lap one, you trash that first set of goggles, rip them off, start from scratch. Hetrick didn't need it today. Joel Hetrick controlling the pace here. ATV motocross at a very muddy Loretta Lynn's ranch here in Tennessee. Chad Wien in there, the white number 44. Yamaha is in second. 
but here is Hetrick just powering down. And this has been the most improved part of his game. The mud races have led to his undoing many, many titles like that. You saw what happened to Cody Ford. The reliability has really stepped up. Hetrick now on the Yamaha. And those are the flaws. The speed was there, multiple race wins every year, but it'd usually be one or two mud races where he'd overheat or have a problem, often tilted the title. Brandon Hogue, you see, has moved up to third. Hogue has bad speed, but he doesn't need to use it right now. Restrelli's in fourth, and everyone is in survival mode at this point. He's trying to bring it to the finish in the mud. Weenan just churning through. We're going to get white flag here for Hetrick. Yes, we are. And this is just dangerous for everyone else. That was the only thing they could count on. Oh, what about the mud races? We had some wild conditions a couple of weeks ago in Pennsylvania, and Hetrick looked like he was going to win that one, and the conditions didn't claim him there, but he was riding conservatively in the first moto. He didn't have equipment problems. He was riding conservatively. He has proven he can go fast in the mud and keep the machine running. And could be many, many more titles headed his way. The four-time champ, the two-time and defending champ two years in a row. Already has the title wrapped up. And another moto win for Joel, originally from Pennsylvania. But he loves this terrain here in Tennessee, and he takes the first moto win. Business-like performance, SSI decals, whole shot award, that's what you need. Well, we mentioned at the top of the show, really the racing is secondary this weekend to the family. We lost the Molander family. There's uh, dad, Don, wife, Kim, and Miranda, our 32nd card girl, and Dane, the racer of the family our Pro-Am champion and a rookie in the Pro class, an RV crash on the way to this event. All right, as many of you know, uh, there's a horrific accident. Tr you know, the Molander family traveling here, you know, they lost their lives in a, in a terrible accident. And, you know, there's not much to say about that. It's, it's just, it's a major, uh, major hurting on the ATV community. Um, you know, they're coming here to spend time with us here at the, at the track like they normally do. And, you know, they didn't make it. So it's, it tears us apart, honestly. It, it, it's hard to even cope with something like that. I, the words I can't even I can't even explain. Um, you know, prayers for their family um, and, and everyone involved that's that's helping out. Uh, there's there's a lot of good people doing a lot of good things right now, and you know it means a lot it, for us to see that and, and see how the racing community comes comes about in, in something like this is uh, it's it's really cool in, in that aspect. But it's also like this is a uh, you know you can't take anything for granted because nothing's guaranteed and. You know, they're, they were just coming here to have a normal weekend, and uh, like I said, it's I, I, I'm at a loss for words. So Godspeed, prayers to their family, and, uh, you know, everyone involved. Well said by Joel Hetrick taking the mantle as the champion of the series. Obviously very hard to come up with the words to sum up what this means. It's such a community atmosphere at these ATV races. Ready for Moto2 here. The conditions have changed quite a bit. I think that was Rastrelli back there. Didn't even have the machine prepped because they could not decide. Everyone's scrambling. Do you want the mud set up or do you want the regular smaller motocross tires? Chad Weenan going to get the whole shot and it is a mad scramble. Hedrick in second almost made the move, but Weenan's going to hold it as they get to the Ten Commandments. Janusa, a good start. He is third, and there is Bryce Ford. Now, Ford, he needs to finish in front of Weenan. He wants to hold on for second in points. There is Rastrelli. You saw that. Making equipment changes too late. Didn't get off the gate, so he is in 13th place right now as Weenan's out front. And, wow, does this look a lot better than it did in Moto1, and now I get the stereotypical cliche. I think I actually see some dust out there. Who would have thought? But we've seen this happen at the Red Limbs actually over and over. I'm not surprised at all. It's incredible what they've done with this racetrack through the years. Summertime in the southeast, thunder showers, they're going to come. It's just a matter of when and how bad is it going to be. And they do a great job reclaiming this track. Everyone at Racer Productions, Jeff Russell and his crew, and the ATV Motocross Series, they've been doing this for a long, long time. Way back in the day, the legend of Dave Coombs, the founder of this event. Uh, one year, the creek, which is pretty far from the track, washed the entire track over. It was completely flooded, and he just created a makeshift TT motocross track over in the campground to be able to get this finale in. So whatever we've seen this weekend, they have dealt with worse here on race weekends at this event. Good battles here. Ford, Hogue, 
Wolf going out, and Wolf gonna make the move on Hogue. Looking good. Looking even better is Wayne keeping the white machine and gear clean this time. As he looks to end the year with a moto win, he's been talking about building, coming back from the collarbone injury. And he's definitely built up to this. ATV Motocross on MAV TV is brought to you by RP Race Performance, by Rocky Mountain ATV MC, and by CST Tires. Weenan and Hedrick, an old story here at ATV Motocross. This time, Weenan flipping the script. Hedrick has been the best man this year, no doubt about it. But in the finale, Weenan looking good. And I don't just mean from a results standpoint. Look at how clean that machine is because he got the whole shot of these conditions. Bryce Ford has recovered a bit. He was swallowed up in that battle earlier with Hogue and Wesley Wolf. Now he's pulled back away from them, looking to get Janusa for a third. I think Ford still might be able to hold on for second in points, and that will be huge to be able to hold off Weenan, who had trouble at our opener in Daytona, and then it got even worse at Gatorback in Gainesville. Big tangle up between he and Hetrick. Broken collarbone. He managed to come back, not miss time, but uh, he's been on the comeback trail in points ever since then. Rastrelli up to 11th after missing the start. They were working on the machine. And I heard even from the Phoenix team, this was a compromised setup here for Hedrick. Again, it would, no one really knew how muddy it was going to be for this moto. And you see Janusa, how slow he was out of that corner. That's the drawback of the smaller tires. You don't have the ground clearance in these ruts. But the machines handle a lot better with the smaller tires. And that's what they're all fighting right now. Looks like a fight for the lead also as Hedrick is going to throw it in there against Weenan to try to win this at the end. Oh, this is going to get good. But I see a little puff of smoke coming from Hedrick's machine. Well, now you can ride everything a lot harder. They're not going to be conservative with the equipment. This is much more of a regular race. You can see me using the air quotes right now, and they're pushing the equipment and they're pushing the limits. Hetrick wants to get the lead. Now, the one problem when a track dries out, you can get it back to pretty raceable conditions, but passing is the last thing that comes back. See Hetrick try to go outside there. A lot of times, one line dries out, and Hetrick learned that the hard way a couple of weeks ago at the Pleasure Valley when he tried an outside line in the mud, and he just got stuck. And now he's doing everything to get Weenan. Can he make the move? Ah, great racing between these two longtime rivals. But can Hedrick find running room? Janusa's back there in third, throwing it sideways. I mentioned Janusa, this is his last pro race of the year, but he has some amazing pit quad events on old Honda 90s, the Turkey Derby. He's got an awesome facility that he's built now in New Jersey. And these guys have a lot of fun up there, and he is the master of riding the mini quads. So he's still got some things at the calendar after this. Meanwhile, back to this battle. Hedrick just taking more facefuls of mud and sand from Weenan in the final battle of the season. And what a way to go out. Nothing really on the line here. Well, a, a race win, obviously, but these two have been racing for titles for so long. I don't know how jazzed up they get on race wins. Well, I guess we just got our answer because you see how hard Hedrick is working to make the move on Weenan and how hard Weenan is working to block it. And I am not surprised they drive this track out. I am surprised we're gonna end this weekend with this type of action and this type of battle. I didn't think we'd get to this point where they are sending it right now and trying to make moves. This is great stuff between the eight-time champ and the four-time champ. And that means we're going more than a decade with these two hogging all the titles in this sport. And that's why we build up Bryce Ford, trying to finish second in points this year, because they have had a complete stranglehold on this game for a long time. Who else can get in there? I've said it thousands of times on these shows. Ford showed, Hogue showed, Rastrelli has been there for a long time. They've all shown potential, but here we are at the end of the year, and we're just back to Weenan versus Hetrick. A pair of Yamahas duking it out.
Hetrick trying. Still not able to make it happen, and now we're down to the last lap. And there's the smoke. Oh, Hetrick's in trouble now. They pushed it maybe too far. Can he even get to the finish? Again, it doesn't matter for the title. He would love to end the year with an overall win. I don't think that's gonna happen because now either he's slowing down to be conservative or the machine is just down on power. Man, that was a lot of smoke coming out there. Still actually pretty close. And honestly, the odd thing, sometimes the rider is the last to know that the smoke is behind them. And sometimes the crew is frantically saying, stay off the clutch, conserve the equipment. And he has no idea Unless he's losing a ton of power, it's not going to matter now. Chad Wienan going to end the year with a moto win and overall a dirt days. And Hedrick survives for second. Janusa is going to end the year with back-to-back -back podiums over Hogue, Ford, Wolf, Rastrelli, Linquist, Saar, and Stanfield. I put my head down. I knew that start was key. I'm happy to be here. Finish out the season strong. I believe I still got fifth in points, so... Uh, to finish with a podium is, uh, it's awesome, man. I, I feel blessed to be up here, finish the season safe, and uh, next year I'm going into my 10th year of pro, so that's a little scary in itself, but it feels like I started yesterday. Um, just happy to be here. Thanks for everything. I couldn't, couldn't make anything stick, man. I got really close and just couldn't make anything stick. So ended up 1-2 on the day for second overall. Um, got, you know, earned my fourth championship this year, so that feels really good to do that. And uh, already have that locked up heading into this round was, was super cool. Way different for me, but you know, I can't argue with that. Four championship, um, you know, healthy leaving the season, ended, ended with uh, a good day. So go have some fun tonight and uh, see you next year. All right, 10 rounds of brutal. We made it to the finale. Got P1, second moto. Got the whole shot of left from start to finish. Had a lot of pressure, but man, great year. Even though I uh, broke my collarbone round two, I fought hard all year to try and get back to form and uh, we found it today. Uh, so proud of my team. We more sports Yamaha. Everybody behind me, thank you so much. And uh, that's a wrap on right here in 18 Motocross. And uh, get ready for the Nations coming up next in October. Thank you, guys. Yeah, and uh, Quad Cross the Nations, a spoiler alert, Team USA with Hetrick, Weenan, and Ford would actually go on to win that event. So congrats to them. Let's give you the quick recap. CST tires here, the very muddy first moto. Hetrick SSI decals, whole shot pulls away, avoids that type of problem when you're mired in the muck. Machines often overheat, but not for Hetrick, who wins the first moto. Then as things were drying out for moto two, Jeffrey Rastrelli and everybody scrambling to figure out mud setup, dry setup, somewhere in between. Rastrelli get off the line late. Hetrick would close to the rear fender of Wienan, but would not make the pass. Then his machine started to smoke. And in the last lap, that was the end of his challenge. And that allowed Wienan to end the year with a victory, one of the best to ever do it in this game. And he will be back for 2024. That is your podium, that is your season. And Ford did it by three points. He takes second in the series. That has got to feel good for him. And he'll be a contender next year as well. But not just about the results this weekend. Our hearts go out to the Molander family. You folks will be missed. That's it for ATV Motocross in 2023.